Welcome to episode 34 of our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As we've mentioned nearly every week during this series, there are thousands of surnames in these regions. To make our task more manageable, we're focusing on pre-Civil War surnames, the old ones. That's because the Industrial Revolution of the late 1800s scattered thousands more names across the Fruited Plains, and some of them, no doubt, made their way into major cities in the South and certain coal mining areas in central Appalachia. Each of the family names that we'll examine today, like always, was requested by members of our YouTube community. You might note that I discuss surnames in the order that I receive them, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve as a resource for you. I also appreciate your patience as I make my way through the names still on our list. By request, I'm posting an email address to the vantage point in the description so you can request a surname catalog if you want one. It contains all the family names that we've covered up through this week. So, today on the vantage point, we'll be talking about nine Appalachian and Southern surnames. They'll take us from America to Ireland, Scotland, England, France, Switzerland, Germany, and Scandinavia, the land of the Vikings. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Number one, Bremer. Doesn't Bremer sound German? <laughs> There's a good reason for that. It's a German name for someone who's known to grumble. From the lack of its presence in my other sources, I'm inclined to think that Bremer came to America from a German-speaking land. Keep in mind that the country we know of as Germany or Deutschland was formed in 1871 by a union of dozens of small German-speaking states. That's why we find some Germans who identify as Saxon, Bavarian, or Prussian, kind of like Tennessee and Kentucky and our North Carolina. I think we in the South, and America in general, are safe in regarding Bremer as a German surname. Number two, Childress. In my home county in East Tennessee, Childress, Childers, and Childs are common surnames. Each of these names have an obvious root word, child. But Harrison says that Childers is derived from an Anglo-Saxon personal name, which means ship and council. Child, on the other hand, refers to a young knight or a young man. Childs, plural, is the son of child. Nonetheless, they're all English surnames. In Ireland, we find only Childers, which McGlysick says means, it means orphanage. In Scotland, we only find child with a dubious origin. In Wales, none of these names or versions of these names are among the common surnames. In Appalachian, the South, I think all these surnames, surnames could be English with the possible exceptions of Childers from Ireland and Child from Scotland. Number three, Wood. When I saw the surname Wood, I couldn't help thinking of my former office manager at the University of the Cumberlands. She insisted that her name was not Woods. Okay, but is it related? We saw that there are several similar yet unconnected names to Childress, and as it turns out, Wood was derived in England for one who lived in the forest. Woods is a plural form of it, but it's a distinct uh, surname. If you remember uh, Winnie the Pooh and his 100 acre wood, the English did not always use forest to identify a sizable stand of trees. Put an S on wood in its plural form of the name. In Ireland, like my old co-worker declared, Wood and Woods are two different names. The classic says that Woods is ten times more numerous than Wood. In Ulster, Woods is among the more common surnames. It was adopted by members of several Irish families, so it may not have any connection to English or Scottish settlers in Ireland. The surname Wood is found in the 14th century Scottish records, so it can be as Scottish as a name can be today. Based on this information, I think we would need it to follow a paper trail or even Y-chromosome DNA test results to locate the origin of your specific line. Number four, Honecker. Honecker is an example of a surname for which some online sources make up meanings and origins to sell a plaque or a frameable roll. One dubious online source claims a Honecker is a Derbyshire, England surname, but according to the Dictionary of American Family Names in 2013, Honecker is an Americanized version of a Swiss-German Honegger. I confirm this by noting that Honecker is not found in any of my British or English surname books for the, in any others in the Isles, for that matter. So I think that here in America, we must see that Honecker is an Americanized version of a Swiss-German surname. On a personal side, I have such a surname 
furrow in my own family tree. Number five, Dooley. When I received a request for Dooley, I got excited because images of great football coaches streamed into my mind. One of those coaches was Vincent Joseph Dooley, who was born in Alabama but made his mark in college sports as the head coach and athletic director for the University of the Georgia, Bull of Georgia Bulldogs. Not the Georgia, but well, you know what I mean. His task was not easy. One of his greatest rivals was the Crimson Tide's Paul Bear Bryant. Dooley coached the Bulldogs to six SEC championships, and in 1980, he won the national championship. At any rate, Coach Dooley's family name used to be spelled in County Meath in Ireland. Dooley is hence an Irish surname that meant dark complexion champion or hero. Wow, <laughs> that's a fitting name for a coach. Number six, Lynch. I know that when some of you heard the name Lynch, you thought about hurried up hangings conducted by mobs. Well, Lynch has become another word for a hanging. In fact, Merriam-Webster defines it as putting of, the putting of someone to death through hanging without legal proceedings. Well, there is no confirmed origin of that sinister meaning. The best theory or association with the name and hanging started back in the 1700s when Captain William Lynch, an Irish-American living in Virginia, enforced what he called Lynch Laws, basically death sentences. As a surname, though, it didn't refer to hanging, legal or otherwise. In Gaelic, Lynch looks like this. It refers to a mariner, sailor, or pilot. McLeisick also claims that Normans named De Lynch uh, changed their names to Lynch and became one of the important tribes at Galway over in Western Ireland. At the end of the day, I think we are more than safe in calling Lynch an Irish surname. Number seven, Simmons. Right off the bat, we can declare Simmons is a highly evolved English surname. It's another form of the son of Simon, or Simmond, which was another way of saying the son of Simon, or even the son of Simeon, which is Hebrew. Simmons is not found among the common surnames in Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. Simon, however, has some presence in Scotland, but Black calls it an English surname. While linguistically, that may be true, that's not likely the case with the folks living in Scotland with that name. After five or six centuries, they're Scots. Still, I think that when it comes to Simmons, it's an English surname. Number eight, Knowles. I've had several requests for Knowles. A striking image of Beyonce Knowles immediately comes to mind when I hear or read that name. She's from Texas, so there's likely a trail of Knowles named people stretching back across the South who may have some biological or familial, con familial connections to her. There's another person that comes to my mind, and that's Malcolm Knowles, the North Carolina State University behavioral scientist who authored several books on the nature of learning in adulthood. If you've heard of the concept of andragogy, you would know that Malcolm Knowles coined it to identify a set of assumptions about how adults learn. That's what my first doctorate was in, by the way. At the end of the day, Knowles began its existence as an English surname, but it's found in all parts of the United States and Ireland. A paper trail would be needed to locate the origin of your line of Knowles. Number nine, Horn. In all honesty, when I read this name, I couldn't help but think of Steve McQueen as a character Tom Horn, who had really nothing to do with the South. I know you're right. I have watched too many movies. The name Horn is derived from either English or Scandinavian sources. Regardless, it could refer to someone who lived on a horn-shaped piece of land or had a penchant for drinking from a horn. Mm. Horn is not found among the common surnames in Ireland and Wales, but it has been in the border country of Scotland since the 1200s. Whew. I think we can safely call Horn an English or Scottish surname, depending on the origin of your line of Horn. Well, folks, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something helpful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I can't explain how it helps us, but it does. I invite you to check out all the videos on the Vantage Point. In addition to Surnames of Appalachia the South, they cover a wide range of topics, including a popular series on Colonel George Armstrong Custer and the Battles of the Washita and the Little Bighorn. If the man warrants it, I'll be back soon with another episode on the Surnames of Appalachia and the American South. I hope to see you then. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.